Most of you probably use Notion every single day, but still feel behind, cluttered, and slightly stressed. Not because Notion doesn't have the functionalities we need, but because we haven't learned the functionalities that are most useful. By the end of this video, you'll learn five key Notion skills that are crucial to memorize for a productive year. If you don't learn these, your Notion workspace will just slowly turn into a graveyard of half-finished tasks, abandoned pages, and projects that never got finished. You don't need to wake up at 5 a.m., you don't need another coffee. What you need is your workspace to allow you to be truly productive. But which features are actually worth memorizing? Notion has a lot to offer, and honestly, some features aren't worth learning in my opinion. Today, I'll show you the five features that I think are a must learn to get the most out of Notion. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. All right, let's just call this page here our dashboard. And I'm going to show you the first thing that you need to learn. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know how I feel about databases. I think they are absolutely crucial to learn. But here with this dashboard lies a feature that you're probably not using. If you click on these three dots here, you can see duplicate view. So we actually create another tab, but in these different tabs, we can have different filters, sorting and groups and they will only be applied to this specific tab. So let's just do a really simple example, task one, add property, and let's say this is a checkbox. So I'll show you the simplest example here. This one here will be tasks I need to do, and then this tab here, let's rename to done. So we have do and done. And what I'm going to do on this done tab here is click on filter, and then say this checkbox here, where the checkbox is checked. So as you can see, this task one here doesn't show up on done. But once I tick it in, as you can see, it stays here. But if I click on done, it's also showing up on here. That is because we have the filter here to say, show me tasks that are checked in. Now, an email that I've gotten quite a few times is when tasks are checked in, do they get deleted? And the answer is no, you're probably just working in a tab that's hiding your done tasks. So whether that's in headquarters or one of my free Notion templates or someone else's template, if you're on a tab that has a filter to hide the unchecked tasks, they are not being deleted, they're simply hiding in another tab, or you might not have any tabs where those tasks are visible. And that's why understanding database tabs is the first key Notion skill to learn. All right, let's add a task here, and let's say every single week I do a journal. And what I could do is click here on journal and write out how do I feel today, question mark, create a divider and start writing. I feel good. But you might have a list of five, 10 questions and you're writing this out every single time. This next skill can save you hours every single week. In databases here, we have this thing called a page template. Now page templates are not the same thing as Notion templates, which you've probably heard of, like my template headquarters, cough, cough, hint, hint. Page templates are just relevant to this specific database. So if I just create another database here, table view, new source, let's just call this projects. If I create a page template here, that will only be available for my projects. And if I create a page template here, that will only be available for my tasks. So page templates are specific to the databases. So to understand how these work, let's create a simple journal template. We'll click here on the tasks database and click on new template. How do I feel today? Question mark. How do I feel today? So here, as you can see, it says you're editing a template in tasks. So this is a template. So everything we add in here will be generated when we decide to use this template. What do I want to achieve tomorrow? So I'll add these different questions in here. Obviously you can add as many as you want. And then when I'm done, I'll simply click away. Now, as you can see, that journal template is showing up in here. So now instead of writing it out like we did here, what I can do now is click on new page and click on open. And here I can see this journal template. I'll simply click there and all of this will get generated for me journal comes up. How do I feel today? What do I want to achieve tomorrow? So that's one reason I love templates. But the second reason is we can actually repeat these. So we can create these into recurring tasks showing up every single day on specific weekdays, once a week. And that's how we can create recurring tasks. I'll have a separate link in the description to a full tutorial on recurring tasks. And that's why page templates is the next notion feature to memorize. Okay, so I've got my do tasks showing up as a list and I can tick them in like that. But let's say I have a few different tasks like this, task two, task three, and task four. Now I'll have to check my task list and I'll have to check my calendar. But in Notion, what we can do is combine them using the next feature. So what I'm going to do is create some space here at the top and we are going to do forward slash database and I'll click here on table view. Now this time, instead of creating a new empty data source, we are going to select our existing database. So here I'll simply select tasks. So now this database here, 
is showing up again. It's the same database, it's just showing up again. And what we can do here is use the next feature of layouts. So there are a bunch of different layouts here in Notion. Again, I have a full tutorial breaking down every single layout, but I'm going to show you the power of the calendar layout here. So if I click on calendar, and then here, let's change the show calendar as month to week, I'm going to be able to see these tasks in my calendar. So my task list is the same thing as my calendar. So as you can see, this date property here magically showed up. That's because for this task view to exist, it obviously needs a date property. So task two here, if I select on today's date, if we scroll up, as you can see, task two is showing up today. And if I add task three here to tomorrow, it's showing up here tomorrow. Task four, let's do today as well. So my task list is connected to my calendar. So in skill number one, we learned how to see different tabs. Now we're actually showing the same database again. And that is the next feature to memorize with Notion. Now let's keep building on this idea. Here we can see task four, task two, and task three. The problem is I don't know which one of these tasks I've completed. That's why we're going to look at the next skill. So we've understood how filters work. The next thing here is understanding property visibility. If I click here on properties, I can select which properties I want to be able to see. So right now the checkbox is hidden, but what we can do here is show that checkbox. So now I can see whether these tasks are completed or not. And because these here are connected, they are the same database. If I tick in task two here, as you can see, it got removed from this do view and now shows up on the done view. So that task two is sitting here and this works in the vice versa as well. If I tick in task four, it gets removed from this view and task four is checked in here. Now let's dive into properties even more. We're going to learn a really advanced property here. Now, if you want help with every single one of these, I actually have a separate tutorial linked in the description going through every single property in Notion. But today we're going to learn the scariest one of all, which is relations. So if I click away here and scroll down, remember we added this projects database. Well, what I can do is connect this database. So let's just add a project here. Let's call it project one. What I can do is connect this database, the projects database to my task database slash calendar database. Remember they're the same thing. So if I click on any of these tasks, and click on add property, what I'll do now is click on relation. And here I can select which database do I want it to connect to. So I want it to connect to this projects database and I'll click here on add relation. So now for all of my tasks, I can select the relevant project. So here I can say, this is to do with project one and now I'll click away. So now remember for us to see which project these are related to, I'll simply click on settings, property visibility, and here I'll select the project. And I can even change the order of these as well if I want. So task four is to do with project one and that's completed. And that's why understanding properties is the fourth Notion skill to learn. Now skill number five isn't actually a Notion skill. It's a productivity skill to implement into Notion. So what I'll do is scroll down here and look at my task list. I have tasks that are due and done. But what I'm going to do in this do tab is add a setting and that setting will be group by the project because I have a productivity rule that I try to stick to, which is focusing on tasks that are working towards a project. So let's say task five here is to do with project one. And then let's add another one, task six, task seven, new task, let's call it task eight and click here on projects and create a new project from here. Let's call it project two and click here on new project two. So I just created that project here instead of creating it down here. We have task five, six and seven and eight. And all of these are working towards a project. But as you can see, this task three here that's scheduled for tomorrow isn't working towards a project. Now, the reason we're filling this out is because this task here is most likely busy work. Typically, I find that tasks that don't have a project associated are busy work. And I like to prioritize tasks that are working towards a major project. So this task three here that's scheduled for tomorrow, what I might do is actually reschedule this. I might move this to Friday and then take my project one task and then schedule them for tomorrow, simply like that. And then I'll take this project two here and schedule that for the next day. So what I'm doing here is prioritizing the tasks that have a project because most of the time projects drive result, not individual tasks. If you find Notion confusing and you just want my all-in-one template, then click on this video here. Or if you want to learn about every single Notion property, then click on this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in one of these videos.